Hey, what's up guys? This is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. So Mike from Mobox Graphics, some of you may know his channel. He does a lot of motion graphics tutorials. I even have a couple tutorials on there. Uh, so you can go check that out if you want to. He reached out to me, sent his logo over, and was wondering if I could help him current it a little bit. So I helped him out, and then I thought, maybe this would be a good tutorial for the channel. So what I'm going to do is show you how I made decisions on kerning this set of letters. You know, we're going to call it a logo, but it's basically a set of letters. And every set that you kern is different. They're not all mathematical. It's great when it works out that you can just space them out evenly, but most of the time you're looking at some different things because mathematical spacing doesn't quite do it. You need to look at it optically. So I'm gonna show you the steps that I took to Kern his logo and hopefully this helps you out. To start with, we've got a set of letters here. They're all a little bit close to each other. So the first thing that I do, instead of making squares and spacing them out and like duplicating these squares, you know, you'll see a lot of people do that. What I do is I just distribute them evenly. So I'll select all of the letters and I'll click on the first letter and that's going to highlight it as a key object. Then I go up to the window panel down to align. It's going to pop out the alignment options. Make sure that you have all the options shown and then go down to distribute spacing. This is going to be grayed out unless you have a key object selected. Remember, just select them all and then click once on whatever object you want to align them to. So we're going to distribute these by 60 points or 60 pixels essentially. And I'm going to click this horizontal distribute spacing. That's going to space all these letters out and put 60 pixels between each one. Now a lot of people stop here, but really when you look at this logo, the O and the X on the end feel like they're a little bit further out than the MOB. And the reason for that is because what we really need to be looking at is the volume of space in between the letters. So when we look at this and we pull all, all of these volumes down, I just wanted to highlight exactly what I'm looking at when I'm kerning. These first two are the same, like exactly the same volume. So I would expect them to be the same amount kern. So we're going to leave them at 60. The second two, this guy looks a little bit bigger than this. And then this guy looks like he's the biggest. So I'm going to reduce the spacing between the B and the O and then reduce it even more between the O and the X. So I'm going to get rid of these little volumes here. What I'm going to do is just grab the O and the X first and shift them together to reduce the space between the B and the O. Now what I'm going to do is just click once. So I'm going to hold shift, use my left arrow key while holding shift and that's going to scoot it over like 10 pixels by default. That's Illustrator's default uh, like super nudge is uh, times 10 of whatever your value is. In this case it's it's pixels or points. Uh, so now instead of 60 this is this spacing here is 50. I still feel like the X, I feel like remember that was the largest volume. This guy needs to come even closer to the O. So I'm going to click on that X and instead of shift clicking I'm just going to count the five. So one, two, three, four, five and just kind of nudge that over there. And so what that's done is it's actually created different spacing between the letters. So we have 60, 60, 50, and 45. And because of that I feel that now this logo looks a lot more evenly spaced. So it's because we're looking at the volume of the space and we're not using just mathematical spacing on the edges of the letters. And once you do that, you're going to, even though mathematically this O is closer to the B than this O is close, close to uh, the M and the B, it feels as if it's similar space. That's because when you're kerning letters, you need to look at the volume, the negative space between letters, and begin to nudge and bump them. What I like to do is start with that mathematical spacing just to get sort of like a baseline spacing between all of the letters. And then from there, I'll nudge them together to try to create a, a better aligned logo or word or set of letters. I hope this helped you guys, uh, you know, basically align them and then nudge them together visually. You gotta do that visually. I'm continuing to ramble on, but I'm gonna wrap this up and I just want you to understand that because I see a lot of people spacing things out automatically just based on math and that's not how you should really kern a set of letters. Like this video if you like this video. Let me know in the comments if there's more things you want to learn. Subscribe for more tips, tutorials, check out the channel. Thanks for watching, all of those things above and I'll see you next time.